Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Coon Cassius for IFL TV. I've just got to give everyone a little time check with this. It is 5 to 2 a.m. We are at the residence, or temporary residence, of uh, Team Parker. Um, it might not be obvious to everyone why you guys are still up, but it is kind of obvious. But could you just explain to me like why we're kind of doing this at 2 o'clock in the morning? Uh, since we moved to Saudi... Um, took our camp here. We've been uh, staying awake to 5 a.m. every day or, and or every morning and waking up around 12, 1 p.m. Uh, to adjust to the time difference and we've been training at midnight every night. Um, well, uh, we start our day at 2, have breakfast at 2, Joe will train at 4 and then we'll have a rest in the midday and then we'll train at midnight um, because that's what time he's going to be fighting around and we'll get used to it. So, so basically just adapting to time and kind of just getting yourself used to, well, predominantly for fight night. Yeah, we've done it. We've done it. Um, we've done it for the last year. When Joe fought in Australia, we started doing that that time, training at the fight time, and we carried it on. We did it when we fought Keen, trained at 11, 8, 11 p.m., and we did the last time training at 12 midnight for a while. Though. So just... It's been successful. I think it's I think it's a good thing to do when you're fighting in a different time zone. Get used to fighting the time you're gonna fight. Train the time you're gonna fight. So I'm assuming, assuming, sorry, excuse me. Everyone in the team has to do the same as well. There's no one that kind of has a different sleep pattern to someone else. Well, the lads who are arriving late this week are just all over the shop. But um, myself, Joe, and George, the ones who matter, we're all on the same schedule. Okay, so by the time this goes out, this will be Wednesday. Uh, obviously, later on is the, the press conference. Mm. Everything's a little bit out of sync because of the whole Saturday-Friday thing, yeah. trying to get used to that. Um, if we track back, um, obviously, to when the fight was announced, there was strong rumours that um, Zhang was actually going to fight um, Wilder at, at the time. Mm. Um, just talk to me about when this was kind of presented to you guys. and I mean, fair play straight off the back of the Wilder win going in against Zhang, but was there other options on the table or was Zhang the only one presented? Zhang was the only fight we got yeah. offered. And it was either sit sit out or go in and, and take the fight. And my logic was, well, first and foremost, I believe Joe can win the fight. Um, but if we sit out and wait till October, he's only probably going to be offered Zhang anyway. Again, that's who they'll try and make him fight. So... Why not take it now while Joe has momentum, he's got the activity um, factor, and he's in the form of his career. You talk about momentum there. Um, it's fair to say that Zhang's coming in to this fight in good form and momentum with the back-to-back the -back wins over Joe Joyce as well. Yeah, he's in great form. Um, his confidence will be all-time high. He's beaten the guy who's beaten Joseph recently. So, um, yeah, it's just, it is a great heavyweight fight, isn't it? There's, listen, uh, you can see ways Jangs can win and you can see ways that Joe can win. It's, it's a real pick-on fight. Are you, are you seeing this part of Joe's career as almost like a new chapter, a new, new phase in his career? Because it seems like, uh, to say, a second win, I don't know if that's the appropriate term, but it's almost like Joe, when you look at kind of even the Ruiz win from, from, that seems like such a long ago, and then the Joshua fight, that seems like such a long time ago. It seems like this is a, a, a completely different phase of his career now. Yeah. Uh, if, like, I think Joe was at where, if, if we didn't fight Joyce, Joe would have got here anyway. I think the Joyce kind of derailed his progression and our progression as a team. We were still very early, and it was a difficult style for Joe to take on at that stage. But... Um, yeah, he's at, he's at, he's not even at his peak yet. There's still a lot more to come from him, and he's improving all the time. So it's exciting. Um, but he's had a long career. He's a veteran, and uh, but still improving. So he's, he's, yeah, he's good. It's good. Let's go back to uh, last December, 23rd, day of reckoning, um, and it certainly was uh, a day of reckoning for for both Wilder and also uh, for Joe. Um, very, very few people outside of your team picked Joe for the win. 
Um, I didn't really speak to anyone that week here in Saudi that were confident that uh, Joe was going to win. I spoke to you that week and obviously your team and you were almost... I felt like you guys were like too confident with the yeah. with kind of the conversations coming back and forth, but it wasn't the case of that. You just you could envisage and ex execute exactly what happened. Yeah, and I think people thought we were, had a bit of it was a bit tongue in cheek that we were kind of you no know, having a laugh. But I know I know what Joe can do, and I knew what he could do against us. I know what he can do against Zhang. Now I think Zhang is a difficult fight um, in different ways to Wilder, but Wilder Wilder. Like Zhang, you had to have Joe had to be concentrated all the time, be switched on, be alert, um, and and picky spots, picky times, and that's what he'll have to do. So what this fight is really just a continuation of what he's been doing against Wilder, what he's done against Wilder, and what he's been doing in the gym. Uh, what did you make of Wilder's comments? Only that recently, mm. almost I think it's fair to say he was kind of downplaying Joe's victory in some respects. I'm sure you would have seen uh, what. Deontay had said, what did you make about that? Yeah, I know what he meant, like, none of us really did anything, but Joe punched him up and down the place, and he wasn't able to do anything. He didn't really do anything, and he kind of ended the fight like, like, oh, well, you know, he didn't, <laughs> he wasn't really, it wasn't like he was there at all. It was like he was just took a good hide and was happy to get out of it, really. Uh, it's just it's not disappointing, but it's it's good and it's motivating for me and Joe because we do watch all the interviews and listen to all the comments and people who doubt Joseph because he doesn't get the credit. You know why? Because Joe's a very nice fella, and he doesn't come with a big entourage. He doesn't you know rock up in a big Mercedes or oh, not even a Mercedes, a bloody Rolls Royce like all these other fellas. I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to ride in a Mercedes, but. Like the way these, you know, he doesn't come with the big flash cars or big entourages or have special demands or he just wants to turn up and fight. He's just a fighting man and uh, he's a nice man and people take that for granted. I think if he had more of, like, you know, more of an ego, people would, I don't know, it's just the way of the world, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think when you look at Joe, like I said, you can't dispute his credentials of who he's gone into the ring with, etc. He's fought um, just about everyone. Um, but when you look at kind of if he was had been more vocal, um, could he have set up kind of these rivalries in the heavyweight divisions? Probably if he'd had the ego, could it have led to um, other fights possibly. But one thing, like you said, you can't kind of doubt his, his willingness to, to fight anyone. He was, he's not just been doing that under you or over the last mm. couple of years. He's been doing that throughout his whole career. Yeah, listen, he came to England and fought Huey Fury when Huey Fury was at the top of boxing. And when he went Andy Ruiz, when Andy Ruiz was the number one contender. So he's been in there, Chisora twice, and after that, Chisora beat Pulev and Gerald Washington. And, you know, he's just done it time and time and again. Nobody wanted to fight Joyce. Everyone avoided Joyce like the plague. Joe went in there. Nobody wants to fight Wilder at the time. Joshua could have had the fight. Like, all respect to Joshua, he's a credible fighter. But he could have had the fight and should have had the fight and made the fight. But they messed around and then Joe upset the apple car. And now nobody wants to fight Zhang, you know? All these top guys, but nobody wants to fight Zhang. Joe's fighting him. And maybe like me in my career, um, I wasn't a trash talker about any fighter. I always respected my opponents. And I probably never got the attention I should have got, or, you know, the headlines I should have got, or the views I should have got. But when I, now that I'm retired, I get respect everywhere I go. And maybe it's because of how I carried myself in my career. I never slagged anybody off, and no one has a has the right to slag me off. And so maybe Joe doesn't get the credit he deserves now, but when he retires, he will. Yeah, there's always been two, like, two sides of it. And, and the, the complete opposite with a mix of both it has been Tyson Fury, who's been so much in the, uh, the public eye for things he said, things he's done, etc. but could back it up in the ring as well. So, But you can't force it. If someone isn't that way inclined and they just want to go about their business, get in the ring, fight and go home, then... Which is kind of the mentality Joe's got, isn't it? He wants to do his job, do you know what I mean? Get out of the ring and um, go home. That kind of attitude. He doesn't want to sit there slagging fighters off and kind of just forcing a rivalry if it's not there. Yeah, and it has to be natural, but controversy sells, and Tyson is the master of it. And Tyson is a completely different person. You know yourself from the one who shouts and screams in press conferences and gets the headlines. Yeah, he's not, he's not that, but he's a good performer, Tyson. Yeah. Uh, people who spend round time with Tyson, obviously, in camp, and he's relatively quiet as well. He has, 
spells where like he just kind of just yeah he's not the the camera comes on and it's almost like lights are on come on it's almost like we're waiting for Tyson to kind of perform he knows that he plays the game very well I just met him in the we went for a photograph all the fights had to get a photograph at the his excellency's house his residence and uh he said he can't get back wait to get back into camp. He said, I was in camp, I was well, couldn't wait to get out of it. Now I'm out of it. He said, I can't wait to get back in. I said, You're like me, you're never happy. <laughs> you know, like it's always the next fight, the next fight or the next thing, yeah. Obviously his uh, his brother Roman's obviously on the bill, so part of the reason I'm sure he probably would have been here any anyway. Um but his camps in Jeddah, so I suppose he would have done. But how was that? We saw some <coughs> photographs of um so, a bit weird actually seeing these photographs sometimes. We saw like uh, Joshua um, and then Ronaldo, then Turkey, Al El Sheikh, His Excellency, then Fury, then Ngannou in a photo. And I was just trying to piece together what the conversations were. Were you around any of that? Well, I'll give you a bit of an exclusive if you like. Um, we were there talking, and it was, listen, it, it is a bizarre scene because like there's Justice Hooney and Kevin Lorena sitting next to each other on a couch made for two people you know, and the right snug and there's no Anthony Joshua's on one side Tyson's here but Ngannou came in and um, Tyson pulled him up straight away and said hey you he said you've been talking about me in interviews saying I'm a coward called me yellow belly and then Ngannou but Ngannou in fairness was quite calm and cool he was like oh no, I didn't say that no he said you did and saying you won the fight I beat you I beat you and Ngannou said no 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 I didn't say that yes you did Tyson said he said well look at what does your record say? Oh, yes, yes. And he said, Tyson, you take care of your man, and I'll take care of my man, and I'll give it to you again. And uh, they just, it, it was, he put it on him for a bit, but it was interesting, yeah, and it was good. But like you said, when we were there, Tyson said, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It was all being here together. Like there was Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren, Anthony Joshua was right beside him, you know, and, and I said, I said, it's a good way to be, isn't it? He said, yeah, it probably is a good way to be. You know, This is mental yeah, to no, hear no, no. that all these people, we know from the picture, they're in the in same room. room. We're in a yeah. room that was, I don't know how, how to measure it. Well, it wasn't a massive room, but it was 20-yard fighters in the room, all these big egos and big men. And uh, I suppose it was bound to happen. But, you know, just to get back to the point, like I said, it's, it's good, isn't it? I said, listen, Zhang, Zhang was there and Joe was here. And they were like, had their hands around, like hand to hand on the shoulder and chit chatting and shaping up to each other. You know what I mean? It was, and like in a couple of days, they're going to try and kill each other. You know what I mean? So, uh, but that's the way it should be. Let the fight be the fight. Um, and like Tyson said, they're all getting well paid, aren't they? So it's a good thing for boxing. Andy, sorry, just a couple of sub questions here. So when this was going on, did you have, was Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn and Joshua, were they all kind of watching what was going on? They were there, and I was sitting, chatting to Tyson at the time. And when he put, when he turned, and there was Ngannou. I had a bottle of water, Joe's water. I wouldn't let Joe's water out of my hand. And I said, "Hey, Joe, you better hold this," just because I, I was worried about Tyson in his eye, because his his eye is still, you know, still, <laughs> still healing. I said, "Hold this, Joe, just in case, you know." But uh, nothing came. Well, nothing came. It was just, just listen. Tyson probably had to do that, you know, because he wouldn't be able to live with himself unless he pulled him up for saying what he said or what, you know, what he thought was a bit of a joke or a liberty. But uh, I respected him for, t for doing it, Tyson. I you know, he put it on him. Well, well, well listen, I respected <laughs> Ngannou because Ngannou yeah, yeah. didn't, didn't just, Ngannou was just saying, okay. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he shit himself or, or back down or apologised. He just stood his ground and was there. So in the midst of all this, uh, his excellency, Turkey, Al Sheikh, no, was what was, what was, was he saying anything? Or? No, he wasn't there. We were all just waiting oh, for him. He wasn't, we, there. No, he, wasn't, okay. he wasn't there. And, and I don't think it would have happened if, had he been there. Um, but... Um, he wasn't there, but there, listen, it was it was nice that we went, we had took this long walk down the drive to like a private gym where he's got this unbelievable collection and a beautiful ring, and um, he made a big deal out of Joseph. Joseph, where's Paco? Where's Paco? Come on, and you had a photograph of Joseph where his handprints and the glove signed, and uh, it was listen, it was a beautiful evening, and it was great to see all the fighters from England together and having you know mutual respect for each other, and uh, but come Friday it'll be all forgotten about. All out the window. Um, we saw um, the public, it was not a public workout, well, it kind of was a public workout, the media workout, should we say, today. Um, yeah, I mean, fighters are giving less and less away in these workouts. I think uh, that's uh, died a death, shall we say, over the last few years, where I suppose you pick up on stuff in that, didn't you? If you're watching and they're going, treating it like a 50% a session or whatever, which you've never got in a in a in an open workout but yeah did you clock anything from Zhang today not really 
it's it's a good thing to see them in the flesh because it just humanizes them and you can see that they're just just like any other fighter because when you're thinking about the fight at night you kind of build them up to be something that they're not um but we me like emmanuel always would say go do a full workout and i always do a good workout with the boys well for the 10 minutes you have i make sure they get they get a good workout in and like you see with sugar and tyson they get the good workout in they make sure they do it and i think it's you're there to put on a show a lot of people try to be coy and do different things or change up their style or, or show the show false pat it, it's not it's not gonna work at this stage in it, it like we're three days from the fight no one's gonna you're not going to change your whole career. You know, you like you're not going to come out with a completely different style. You're going to box exactly how you box. He, he seems to have. Um, he's always had this thing. He's like a deadpan poker face. You can't really read a lot from his emotions. He seems like he's kind of uh, doesn't give too much away. Kind of visually from himself. Some people are kind of animated in some certain ways. He, he seems like he's quite deadpan. If that makes sense. Yeah, he's just no. He's he's, a very, he's 40 years old. He's older than me. You know, he's older than me. So imagine me going in with Joseph now at this stage of my life. That's what I said to Joe. He's older than me. But he, he's he been there. He was an Olympic silver medalist in 2008. How long ago was that? And... Yeah. 16 years ago. Yeah, he's been around a long time. So he's seen it all before. You know, it's nothing going to excite him too much. He's, I think he's just here to do business. He, he's going to be... It's going to be an excellent... It's going to be an epic battle because... Even if we have to go to the trenches with him, Joe's ready for that. Just before we end, I mean, with Joseph now, we know it is the situation in Saudi Arabia is presenting fighters financially um, more beneficially, shall we say. But is it about Joseph capturing the world title again or is it about Joseph earning as much money as he can or ideally a combination of the two? Ideally, the both both of them that go hand in hand, but Joe's been, Joe's the only one who's fought out here three times, and he's been very fortunate to, to perform on each each time. You know what I mean? Um, and there's a rematch clause. If and when Joe wins, he has to rematch this Zhang again. If Zhang takes it in October, so that'll be four fights in Saudi. So um, it's it's been it's been fantastic for both of us. Listen, we're both having a great time, Joe's um, getting respect for his performances and getting a a accolades, and we're both making good money together, so it's, it's, it's wonderful. Okay, well, Andy, we appreciate your time. Like I said, by the time this goes out, uh, it will be the day of the press conference. It will be later on this evening. Um, I think you've got another two or three hours to keep yourself yeah. up. Okay. I'm definitely Andy. going back to go to bed, uh, but appreciate your time. Have you got anything else you'd like to say, Andy, thank you for the story today, by the way. Yeah. It, was, uh, yeah. it was great to hear that, you telling me that. I was like, it sounded like, it's like a boxing fan's dream just to have been a fly in the wall there. Yeah, it was. And it was great to see your, listen, it was good. Tyson was there, AJ was there, Ngannou was there, Zhang and Joe. It was just it was like the powerhouses of boxing, really. It was great. It was great to be there. Did Tyson talk to Joshua? No, they actually never said a word to each other. Oh. Which was interesting as well. And except we actually well, they didn't even acknowledge each other. I don't think so. We we were walking shoulder to shoulder at one stage. Me, Joe, Joshua and Tyson and it just it never happened. But um there's some great fights on the card. Everyone should tune in and watch. There's some great fights from top to bottom. Nick Nick Ball and Vargas is a good fight and Hooney and Lorena is a great fight. So Chamberlain and Gwyn as well. Yeah. I've been training with Gavin Gwyn this morning, we were in the gym together and uh, good lad. Good lad, yeah. Okay, Andy, thank you very much for your time. Um, and I pestered you for the last three days. No, as soon as I landed, thank I pestered you. you but I appreciate you uh, allowing us into your, uh, your place here. And, uh, yeah, listen, best of luck on Saturday. And uh, we'll catch up with you after uh, the fight on Friday. I keep saying Saturday, right, actually. Yeah. Friday night, Friday night, 8th of March. Thank you very much, Coogan. Thank you. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.